Dr. Michael Maloney is the chief of sports medicine for the University of Rochester Medical Center. He's the official medical advisor of the Fairways of Life show. You guys that have watched the show with us for years, no doubt, uh, remember the doctor when he's been on through various major medical questions surrounding the game. Many of those have been surrounding Tiger Woods throughout the course of the year, and I want to get to Tiger in a second. But first, uh, Doctor, good to see you. I want to ask you about Jordan Spieth. Uh, with what's going on with Jordan and his wrist, uh, and it's it's about a pronation of the wrist, but what is at, medically, what is actually happening there? How serious is this? Well, good to see you again. It's been a little while, and, and uh, hopefully that means that golfers everywhere are more healthy this season. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Jordan's been, I think, dealing with this. It's been pretty, pretty well known in the press. And um, this type of an injury is something that really can um, limit their ability to, to work at their game, work at things that they're trying to accomplish. And I think that's probably what he's mostly been, been dealing with is um, he describes this snapping sensation that's been occurring um, relative to making contact and, and rotating past the ball. So um, if you talk about the wrist, you know, there are these uh, tendon compartments on the backside of the wrist. There's six of them, got a nice uh, graphic there. I think the yellow one is the one that we're looking at, and you can see the, um, the red subsheath, they call it. That tendon is on the outside of the wrist. And uh, as mentioned, when you're rotating, um, if there's been attenuation, if there's some stretching uh, or some tendon disease, uh, for guys like me, a bad shot can do it. You pop that little subsheath, and uh, that now that yellow tendon starts to kind of snap or rotate when you're trying to, to hit balls. And I, um, I think you know people try to fight through it and work through it, and you know do lots of medications and they do the therapy. But it sounds like it's gotten to a point where he needs to kind of maybe think about something more aggressively as he gets to the off season. Now, that more aggressively, if, if, if he decides to go to surgery, and he seemed to imply the last time he was talking about it that that's a, that's a strong possibility, what do you actually do? Are you actually going in and sewing up what's already there, or do you have to put in something else? Yeah, it's a great question. It, it, it a little bit depends, I think, on how the tendon is itself, how healthy it is, and the imaging will kind of give some indication around that. Um, you know, obviously as a tendon, it starts to snap back and forth over the bone multiple times. That's not a good scenario. So, you know, there's different degrees of injury to this, uh, tendon. You, sometimes you can just do a cleanup or you're, you know, just cleaning the tendon. But I think at this point, given how much he's had to endure that little sheath we were showing where the tendon starts to pop out, it's really hard to kind of just repair that. And it actually becomes what we say is almost a reconstruction where they'll take some other tissue uh, from around the wrist and they'll try to recreate um, a little area where that now tendon can be stabilized. And you know you gotta help hope that the tendon stays healthy. Um, you hope you don't get some scar tissue kind of running through there. And then you know obviously rehab is going to be critical to you know reestablish his strength and motion and his mechanics. Um, and it'll, it'll take some time. Yeah, well, let's talk about that time for a second. What, let's assume that on, on the scale that you just gave us, that it's a little bit more than moderate towards the severe end. What, what would be the normal amount of time that one would need recovery? And then add to that, doctor, the fact that you've got a professional athlete here who needs to practice and they're going to hit shots that at a time they're going to put a lot of stress on that area. So how much recovery are we talking about here? And then what, what can we expect on the other side of it? Yeah, it's a great question. And again, it gets back to the, the spectrum of the injury and, and where he is and, and what he's going to need to do. Obviously, if this is something where it's a, a cleanup type of procedure. Maybe we can do some repair of the tissue and, and maybe get the tissue a little healthier. That could be a quicker timeline. Um, but I think if he's at this point and he really hasn't been able to recover to where he needs to be to play and to work, uh, you could be looking at six months, maybe eight months. Um, oh. And again, I never put it past a professional athlete to kind of test their ability to kind of recover and get better. But I think certainly you just want to be cognizant of um, all the variables that go into a successful outcome and uh, being respectful of kind of what has to happen when you do surgery. And again, I don't know specifically what they're planning to do. So I would say, you know, you could be looking at three months, you could be looking at six to eight, depending on what might need to be done. Uh, Will Zalatoris uh, had the back surgery after the Masters last year, microdisectomy, uh, and it seems like 
you and I have talked about microdiscectomy so many times over the years, of course, because of Tiger. But what does it mean when when you see an athlete that needs a microdiscectomy as young as Will did? Yeah, I mean, it's actually com- more common in the younger golfers. And again, it's it's a little bit of, you know, how much they're working at it, the stress they put on that spine, uh, the rotation that occurs. And so the microdiscectomy is an attempt to alleviate pressure or pain from one of those discs that it lives between the little vertebrae, the little bones. And if there's been rotation or excessive flexion and that disc has become compressed to a point where it's now pinching on a nerve and you can't get that to settle down with medication and therapy and injections, um, then you got to go in there and, and get that disc kind of cleaned up and cleaned out. And that sometimes for young golfers can start the you know process of their back being an issue. Um, certainly Tiger's had much larger issues relative to his spine, um, needing fusion and other things that as we get older become more common as the spine kind of wears down from a lot of stress. But uh, my understanding is I think he had a couple of discs that were addressed and uh, I believe it was spring of 23 and obviously he's been back playing but I think obviously it's, it's again incumbent on the athlete to just understand their body, keep themselves strong and balanced. They've got great teams around them. And uh, certainly if it's something that, you know, needs attention, they got to kind of address it so it doesn't become something bigger. Of medical issues with, with golfers, we've talked about, you even mentioned Tiger's name a couple of times. We recently saw a photo of Tiger's right leg. And this was one of the first times that we've seen it uncovered, unsheathed, if you will. From your professional eye, what are you seeing here, given the fact that Tiger continues to tell us that he's getting stronger and stronger, the the gait is getting better, he feels like he's on the road to recovery the way he should be? Guy is absolutely amazing. I mean, what what he's overcome is just so remarkable. The trauma, the surgery, the recoveries, the fusions. Um, I look at that picture and, you know, obviously – you know, you see the obvious incision and, and um, you know, the muscle difference side to side. Um, but to me, I think what's been most impressive is, you know, his ability to try to take what he's been left with and make the most of it. Um, he's got great alignment, which I think helps him uh, walking. I'm sure that between his leg and then the, uh, the foot and ankle and the fusion that he had to undergo, there's a lot of um, restrictions. Um, but boy, if you, if you see him and, you know, you're, you're able to kind of acknowledge what he's gone through, I think the fact that he's just continued to work, uh, he's got so much resilience and perseverance around this and just continues to perform. I mean, he finds ways to accommodate and get his swing where he needs to be, put his work in. It's, uh, again, you talk about Christian as an inspiration in many ways, Tiger is an inspiration to have gone through what he has and to still be out there working so hard. It's just really impressive. Dr. Michael Maloney, Chief of Sports Medicine at the University of Rochester Medical Center. You are a superstar, too. Thank you for your time, my friend. It's always good to catch up. 